Okay, let's get started with Module 1, Introduction and What's New in SharePoint 2013 Workflow. One of the first things that I get asked is, is SharePoint a good workflow platform? And I can enthusiastically say yes, yes. I've been building workflows on SharePoint all the way back since the 2003 edition when workflow wasn't even built into the platform yet. This is a survey that was conducted by Global360 a couple of years ago asking organizations what they intended to use SharePoint for within their enterprise. As we can see, both document workflow and business process management both figured highly in enterprise planning. In fact, even more so than something like enterprise content management. So what this demonstrates to me is that yes, organizations do appreciate and are planning on using SharePoint for workflow. So let's define this a little bit further though. I tend to divide workflows into two broad buckets, application versus enterprise. Application workflows are focused on facilitating human tasks. We collect data from one person, we send the data to somebody else. There's often documents that have to get passed between people. Often the exception flows, the unusual situations that we encounter are not well scripted. Human beings are required to understand the context of what's happening and create manual solutions. So these exception flows are not, are not often not automated. In enterprise workflow, we're really talking about big enterprise software systems being able to talk to each other. This might be an example of an order processing system talking to an inventory management system. In this case, the core process uh, of the enterprise workflow is to convert data structures from one format into another format, and then exchange that data between different endpoints of those two different systems. Typically, the exception flows are well known and they're baked right into the workflow. An example of an enterprise workflow platform would be Microsoft's BizTalk server. So SharePoint clearly is good for application scoped workflows, the facilitation of human tasks and, and, and uh, working with documents and data but it's not a good choice for enterprise workflow. Um, it is perfectly acceptable to consider two different workflow platforms. It's, it's hard to find a workflow platform that can handle both application and enterprise workflows well. So it's not uncommon that your application workflow is separate from your enterprise, but they can integrate. There is nothing wrong with using SharePoint for application style workflows and then having them exchange data with an enterprise workflow platform to facilitate system to system. And in fact, I think that's a good strategy and one that I've seen a lot of organizations uh, employ. Within the SharePoint realm of application workflows, we really see two different buckets, content management versus business process automation. Historically, out of the box, SharePoint has included workflows for content management, document review and approval, collecting feedback, uh, flipping the content publishing status on a page or a document on something like an intranet or a public facing website. We've also seen workflows um, included for information management policies, like the retention policy that controls the life cycle of content. And we also see workflows employed in the content organization. So things like record centers, where we can use workflow to organize documents into different folders and libraries, etc. So we've already seen workflow used and employed successfully out of the box with SharePoint in both 2007 and 20, 2010. By contrast, process automation are things like case management, order processing, e-commerce, sales proposal management, etc. Most of those kinds of workflows tend to be very specific to how our organizations do business. And so really, SharePoint is a good platform for process automation, but we really need to write those workflows ourselves. Workflow is actually introduced into the SharePoint platform in 2007. Um, Microsoft had built a Windows workflow foundation into the .NET framework 3.51 which came out in 2006. And that framework was designed to provide developers with a set of, of classes that they could use to implement workflow in their custom applications. So the SharePoint team took that workflow foundation and built a SharePoint specific workflow runtime, which enabled us to now run workflows in SharePoint. 
This is referred to as the SharePoint 2007, and then in 2010, the 2010 workflow runtime. 2013, this has all changed. Microsoft has pulled the workflow platform out of SharePoint and implemented it as a separate deployable technology called the Workflow Manager. The Workflow Manager can be deployed and run side by side on SharePoint servers, or it can actually be deployed and run in its own separate hardware as its own separate farm. The reason for this, obviously, is that Microsoft is seeing Workflow Manager supporting workflow functions not just for SharePoint, but other workflow platforms moving forward. I wouldn't be surprised to see Dynamics CRM, for example, start to use the Workflow Manager in, in future versions. So Workflow Manager is now a completely separate technology, and it talks to SharePoint through SharePoint Web Services using the new SharePoint 2013 app model, which I'm not going to go into too much detail on. Interestingly enough, the SharePoint 2010 workflow runtime is still included in 2013. One reason for this is upgrades. As uh, organizations upgrade from SharePoint 2010 to 2013, they want their existing workflows to continue to run. There are no up true upgrade from 2010 to 2013 workflow. The 2013 workflow platform using Workflow Manager is completely new. It's completely separate from the legacy uh, SharePoint workflow runtime. And there really is no direct upgrade path. If you have a workflow you wrote in 2010 and you really want it to be um, running on the new 2013 workflow platform, you will be rewriting it. There will not be any tools to upgrade. 